reasonably fast performance and very good photo quality, the Nikon D3200 delivers what you expect from a DSLR. While the camera's lackluster feature set, some underwhelming design changes, and photos that don't necessarily surpass its predecessor might disappoint some people, it still delivers enough that it should please most folks who are looking for an upgrade from their point-and-shoots. It still has a lot of the same or similar components to the D3100, including the same viewfinder and autofocus system. The latter is bolstered by Nikon's newer scene recognition technology, though. It also has a newer, higher-resolution sensor coupled with Nikon's updated X-Speed 3 imaging engine. It's got a higher-resolution LCD and 1080p video with a supporting microphone jack and HDMI connector. The D3200 essentially has the same body as the D3100. It's still relatively small and light, though it also still feels a little plasticky. While it remains a pretty streamlined camera to shoot with, Nikon has changed a few of the control types and locations in ways I don't particularly like. It keeps the same viewfinder. It's small and dim, which is pretty typical for this class. But I also hate the tiny focus points, which only illuminate, and only briefly, when you half-press the shutter. They're impossible to see in moderate to dim light, so if you shoot on anything other than full auto, you first have to press the shutter to find the appropriate focus point before you can even begin to frame the scene. Nikon has also moved the record button to what I think is an awkward location. On the D3100, there's a combination live view record switch that falls under your right thumb, and that's really nice. Now we're back to the separate live view button on the back, which you have to invoke first before you can record, and a record button on top that you've got to stretch to reach. The D3200 does keep the nice guide mode that provides various levels of step-by-step -step help for a limited number of common shooting scenarios. And Nikon laudably puts the D3200's SD card slot in the more accessible grip side location. Unfortunately, it retains the bare bones feature set of the D3100, right down to the lack of something as basic as bracketing. Compared to its competitors, the D3200 matches their photo quality, but doesn't really surpass them. In fact, I think the D3100 has better photos out of all, and by the numbers it has a better noise profile. In general, the JPEGs look clean up through ISO 400. You don't gain any unambiguous advantages shooting RAW until about ISO 1600. It still gives you some headroom for image manipulation, but you can't easily produce a cleaner image without some trade-offs. In other respects, color, exposure, sharpness, tonal range, the camera fares very well. I wasn't terribly impressed with the video quality, though. It's okay for personal vacation-type use, but even in good light, it's fairly soft, and there are a variety of annoying edge-based artifacts. In dim light, it gets very noisy. The performance is definitely better than its predecessor, though it's still no rocket ship compared with models like the SLT A37. As is typical for its class, live view autofocus is slow and cumbersome, and the full-time autofocus in video performs about the same as other DSLRs. It can focus, but it doesn't stick, and it pulses on unmoving objects. There's nothing about this camera that screams, buy me, or don't buy me. It's faster, has a better LCD, and better video than the D3100, but the higher resolution sensor doesn't deliver better photo quality. Its bare-bones feature set can't match that of the cheaper A37, and you can probably find the older but more feature-rich D5100 for less than the cost of the new D3200. Still, I think most entry-level shooters would be perfectly satisfied with the Nikon D3200.